Hello, in this video we're going to derive the t-distribution from scratch. We're going to house the video in two different playlists on this channel, Transformations of Random Variables and Statistical Distributions. Let's jump right in. Let z be a standard normal random variable with PDF given by this. Let x be a chi-squared random variable with n degrees of freedom and PDF represented by this. We're going to assume that z and x are independent and we want to find the distribution of t and where t is z divided by the square root of x over the square root of n. So it's a standard normal divided by the square root of a chi-squared divided by its degrees of freedom and that's what a t distribution is. But to do this we need to create another variable that helps us in the transformation and that's w equal to x and then and then we'll we'll use it to drive the joint density of t and w and then we'll integrate out w to find the marginal density of, of t which is what we're in pursuit of so given these transformations you can back solve for z and x so x is equal to w and z is equal to t times the square root of w over n the jacobian of this transformation is this and you think of it as this is the derivative of z with respect to t. And then this top right one is the derivative of z with respect to w. This, this lower left is the derivative of x with respect to t. And then the derivative of x with respect to w. You take the determinant and you get this. And then the joint density for t and w is this and so you plug in what we have back transformed for z which is t square root of w over n plug it into the density for the z plug in w for the density of x and times the absolute value of the jacobian and then when we plug those values in we get we get this expression here now let's simplify it. What I want to simplify is sort of isolate all the w's and then all the constants. So the n and the pi comes out, the gamma of n over 2, all the 2's are brought here, 2 raised to the n plus 2 over 2. The w's here and this w to the 1 half combined to this. We bring the e's together and factor out a w. And one of the reasons that we do this, now this is the joint density of T and W, but we want to integrate out W, so I'm collecting all those terms, and it looks like it's a gamma distribution, the way that it's setting up. So now to obtain the density for T by integrating out W, this is it, so we take the, the marginal density for T is integral from zero to infinity of this joint density DW, and we plug in what we derived just a second ago. We take the constants out and leave this uh, expression here. These are all involved W. Now, if we multiply this expression by 1, it doesn't change the value of it, so we do that. We multiply by gamma of n plus 1 over 2 and divide by the same. And then this is essentially multiplying and dividing that quantity. And dang it, this should be a plus in plus 1 over 2, because this is a minus, and so when those are multiplied together, we get the exponent is 0, and anything that's 0 is 1. And the hard copy, well, that will be corrected. But then this is a gamma distribution, and it integrates to 1, where this term here is beta. And so this is beta raised to the, you know, this term here, which I call alpha often, this gamma of alpha. So this is 1. And we're left with this term here. Now we can simplify. So the gamma comes down, the square root of n pi comes down, uh, gamma of n over 2. Now this 1 half raised to the minus n over 2, n plus 1 over 2, and 2 raised to the n plus 1 over 2, all those cancel and leaving it. And this is it. This is the density of a t distribution. Now we're not going to prove it in this video but in, in a later video the mean of a t random variable is 0 assuming that n is greater than 1 otherwise it's undefined. The variance of a t distribution is uh, 
um, this. It's n over n minus 2, assuming the degrees of freedom is strictly greater than 2. It's infinity when it's uh, greater than 1 and less than or equal to 2, and it's undefined otherwise. Now, if we look at some of the actual curves of the PDFs of different degrees of freedom, and I may have to shrink this a little bit. Yep. So this is it. And so notice that, that with when t with 5 degrees of freedom, that's this dotted line. And notice that it has a thicker tail or a fatter tail, shorter hump. So that means there's more uncertainty in that distribution than compared to the uh, t distribution with larger degrees of freedom, 10 or the dash. And it's in, you know, a little bit less of a thin tail, right? The dotted versus the dashed, higher hump. 30 degrees of freedom has the, the thinnest tails, highest hump. These all integrate to one, but Notice as the degrees of freedom increase, the, the tails get thinner, and it actually limits to a standard normal distribution. And I have a video on the on this channel that illustrates that limiting distribution of a T distribution. Okay, well that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.